Okay, the very first thing that I'm looking for is I need to think about what my end goal is. Oh, totally upside down. There we go. I need to think about what my end goal is. Now, as I am going through these, just for the instructor simplicity of it, for the consistency of it from semester to semester, from instruction to instruction, course to course, my aesthetics will be the book aesthetics. That doesn't mean it has to be your aesthetics. For example, this is T length because I'm using the entire sloper. It does have a waistband, which means eventually I'm gonna have to put a waistband with this pattern. And I have the 45 degree angles coming down from the front. I do not have a center seam, which means my pattern piece is gonna have to go on the fold. So we'll cut one on the fold, not two. And I have to be thinking about that because that labeling has to go on your pattern piece. So in my glossary, in my binder, I have my aesthetic. This is what my piece is trying to accomplish. Okay, up here, I've already told you what method it's gonna be, what you're gonna figure out what page it is and what example it is, because this will change depending on what your aesthetic is. What if we're using the slash method, we're combining darts, but you decide to do it on a male pant instead of a skirt? Then it would be a different page number, different example number, you would have to find those references. Does that make sense? But these are the references that I am going off of to give you the examples. Okay. So when I'm talking about your aesthetic in your glossary, that's what I'm referring to. <clears throat> if we wanted a center seam here, then my drawing would just reflect that. If I wanted to use a facing instead of a waistband, my drawing would reflect that. If I wanted a shorter skirt instead of a longer one, my drawing would reflect that. Now, how many of you are really comfortable in your sketching skills? Probably Chad. How about the rest of you? So I took my paper, laid it right over the book, and traced the one right out of the book, which is another reason why my examples will follow the book because then I can get my aesthetics in my example copy, my instructor copy, to be consistent and not rely on my personal skills. So I'm tracing. That's why mine looks exactly the same. <clears throat> As a teacher, copying is not illegal. It just is a sharing of a resource. That's it. That's how that works. Okay, so I'm gonna take a piece of paper And we are doing slash method and we're working on the abdominal darts. Okay. Now, would you want this aesthetic in the rear? Would you want two diagonal darts coming out from center of glute muscle in the back? Wouldn't it make it like, like the so let's see if we would like it. Um, every woman in the room, nope, okay. not going to happen, right? Because not only does it give you ski slopes out here on the end of this body curve, but it accentuates away from the fact that you've got two of them. <laughs> we really want to be accentuating that you've got two glute muscles, not one solid N or two across the back. And this is going to give you a different aesthetic than you want in the back. So I don't know that I would do this aesthetic on a back. I think I would keep the two vertical darts on the back just because of the shape that's happening in the back. But in the front, what if you've got um, a little pregnancy belly? What if you have a post baby belly? What if you have just a little abdominal pooch and you want to be able to aesthetically draw the eye away from that? and accentuate the hourglass figure, which society has told us is desirable in women. Okay, this style line just helps draw the eye back out to the hip lines to help give you that curve as an optical illusion. 
So for slash method, any th anytime we're doing slash method, you're gonna trace the entire sloper first. Remember we just seam allowances when we're finished at the end. We don't do them in the beginning like we do in the alteration unit. I'm gonna do a slightly shorter skirt on this example just so I have paper. Oh, my sloper needs to be retaped. These slopers have had a hard life. Um, yeah, be very, very delicate. And um, is your pin coming out? My pen, my pin that holds it, anything. There are pliers in the toolbox back under the black table. Mm -hmm. And sometimes that dial just can't crimp that metal tight enough. So I usually get it in position, crank it as tight as I can, and then I use the pliers and just give it a little extra crimp. Okay, so as I'm tracing, I need to be able to know where my hip line is because that's a reference point that's gonna have to go back on my pattern piece. I need to know where my pivot points are, which you'll have a pivot point at the bottom of every dart. And then if you have multiple darts, you'll have a common pivot point, which is in between the two darts. We need to know where all three of those are. Once again, I'd put my circles on when I was done because we're gonna be slashing through this. And I need a ruler. Oh, got a ruler. <laughs> I am going to need scissors by the time I'm finished, but we'll be all right. Okay. And like I said, I'm doing a shorter skirt. This is a... Wait. Eight. Eight inches. So that's going to be 16 inches. So that is going to be a mini. That's going to be mid-thigh in full scale. While you're tracing, I'm going to grab those scissors. Okay, once you have it traced, then you're going to cut this out. Okay, now can anybody see the problem with that already? Is if I cut this out, what does it not have? It doesn't have seam allowance, which means I'm going to have to add more paper on later. So don't cut it out exact. Cut it out pretty rough, knowing whatever your seam allowance is going to be. What does your seam allowance need to be? Who's the designer? So what does your seam allowance need to be? Whatever you want. Are you constructing these? No. So theory is fine. A small one is fine. Okay, are you ready? You don't have a trace already? You don't need your circles yet because we're gonna be cutting at the bottom of this dart and moving them. So I would wait on your circle. Okay, so we are going to combine both of these darts and we're gonna put them in one place radiating from the center front. So if we're doing slash method, it means we're going to cut both of these darts to pivot and open up the space here at center front. So we are going to cut down our fold lines. Which of these lines is the fold line? This line or this line? Yes. Technically not. 
Backwards. The one closest to this line. Yes, because you would take this line and pull it this way so that the excess on the back is pointing towards the center front. That makes this your fold line and this your fold line. You're going to cut down your fold line and then in a line to your common pivot point. That's your point in the center. Down from the fold line to your common pivot point. And then from your center front to your common pivot point. Now this pivot point becomes a true pivot because we are gonna take our scissors and we're gonna cut down this line and two but not through the point, and down this line and two but not through the point, and down this line and two but not through the point. This whole piece of paper right here and this whole piece of paper right here are gonna shift and only be connected teeny tiny sliver right here at this dot. What happens if you accidentally cut through your pivot points? Big whooper, tape them. Okay, you should have paper that shifts like this. Okay. Mike, I need this paper to lay flat. It's making me crazy. We are gonna close dart number one that's closest to the out seam. We're gonna take this piece of paper and we're gonna lay it over to the vertical line of the fold line and the vertical line of the other side of the dart are lined up. Not necessarily our waistline, but the vertical line are in line and we're gonna tape that down. These poor videos are going to be way long, but it'll be the first time in my history of teaching that I have videos. So, you know, long is better than no video. Okay. So we've just closed the first dart. And as you can see, if our paper was still connected, we're starting to move that gap over here. We're just shifting its position. We're going to take this second piece. Oh, we're going to hold on to it and we're going to take the fold line of this dart and we're going to line it up with the line of the other dart, making sure that our vertical lines are touching, not necessarily our waistline, but our vertical lines. We need to make sure we're not getting a paper bubble down here, that this stays flat. And how this is going to stay flat is that you have teeny tiny sliver holding on down here at this pivot. We're going to secure that. Now we've just opened up this dart. So what you need to do is you need to put a piece of filler paper behind this dart. I don't know why I came over there to get tape. I have tape holding my camera down. Okay. Next time, call me on my crap, Chad. <laughs> I mean, geez. You just liked your tape better. <laughs> <laughs> Natasha's tape is the bomb. <laughs> yes, in my bookshelf, on the bottom shelf on the left is a ream of white. So that you can have contrasting color for your filler. And that's just great. Sometimes my filler, when I'm doing this, I do use tissue paper for the filler because if I have to fold a dart, the tissue paper is more easily manipulatable. Okay. So now we've moved the dart and we have that done. We know where our new dart lines are. I'm just going to draw this on the cut line because of the way I cut it. It's hard to see the one dart on camera to see both dart lines. Those are, that's now my dart. 
depending on how I want this to sit on the body will depend on how I fold this dart. But before I can seam allowance any of this, the dart has to be folded. So you have to make that choice. If we go back to looking at this on the body, and sadly this won't be on the video because I can't move the camera quite so much. If I have the darts folded towards the center core of the body, this is what it looks like. If I have the darts folded away from center core of the body, this is what it looks like. It's subtle, but it is different. You choose what you're looking for. I like it away from the body. If I put it in towards the center core of the body, I get more of a pregnancy belly, which would be great if I'm doing um, early maternity wear or um, something with a little bit of stretch in it. But if I'm doing just a woven, I would want my darts folded out. So away from the center core of the body, which is backwards from how you're traditionally taught to fold a dart. But is this a vertical dart? No. So vertical dart rules don't apply. Is it a horizontal dart? No, which means horizontal dart rules do not apply. Designer rules apply. So you decide which way you're going to fold it. If I'm going to fold it away from center core of the body, that means my top line is my fold line. So I would bring that line down. You can see how my corners match. Now I would use my curve and I would re-true my seam allowance. Make sure you're going from corner to corner. You're not trying to correct just this tiny section and just this tiny section, but that you're treating it as one cohesive hole on your waistline. Then seam allowance the whole thing. And then where is your dart circle gonna be? The tip of your dart is here. Are you gonna have a dart circle? Are you gonna have your dart extend all the way to the common pivot point? Are you gonna shorten up your dart because your circle is, your apex of your curve is right here and maybe you don't want your dart to extend all the way to the apex of the curve? Once again, those are designer choices. You choose those choices. I'm not choosing those choices for you. If I were doing this, I would have one circle right here on the common pivot point. I would shorten my dart so the tip of my dart stays outside the circle. I would keep my circle the same circumference it was on the sloper. Then I would seam allowance the whole thing, label. Because my aesthetic, I don't have a center seam down the middle. That means this becomes a fold line, which means no seam allowance down the center front. How big of a hem am I gonna put on it? Am I just doing a little quarter inch turn under? Am I doing a double fold? Am I doing an inch and a half for weight and heft to keep the skirt down? Am I sewing weights in the bottom of the skirt so wind doesn't pick it up and expose cheeks? What am I doing with this hem? That is a choice you make. Where is my grain line going? Is I, am I keeping my grain line parallel with the center front? If I'm putting it on the fold and I'm doing that, then this fold line mark is your grain line. What if you want your grain line on the bias? What if you want it to mimic this 45 degree angle and this is your grain line? You choose that, but that changes your aesthetic. If you look on page or take a reference on page 83 in the Principles of Flat Pattern Design book, there is an illustration of skirts right here. Boy, oh my goodness, this is difficult. Okay, so all these different skirts. Can you see how they're all different, how the style lines are all different? They are the exact same pattern, the exact same piece. The only thing that is different is where they put the grain line. That's the only change that they made, but it changes how the fabric hangs. 
So you need to think about that in your aesthetic before you put grain lines on your pieces. How do you want this grain line to be hanging? If your grain line is parallel to the side seam, then it's gonna hang like this. If your grain line is perpendicular to the floor, it's gonna look like this. I mean, to the center of your leg, sorry. This is perpendicular to side seam. This is perpendicular to center of leg, like your crease line in your pants. This one would be uh, on the bias at a 45 degree angle. And this one is perpendicular to center, or parallel to center front. And all of that ripple happens only in grain line and how gravity's pulling your fabric. And this is based on a woven fabric with no stretch except for on bias. Does that make sense? So when you're finished, your piece, your finished piece should look something very much like this. Oi. Okay. My dart is marked because my dart was folded when I cut it, it appropriately notches it. I have the, this is marked on the fold line and center front. I've chosen that my grain line is parallel to center front. I have notched it for construction ease. My hip line is marked on there. I have hashed out the two dart lines that no longer apply. I have trued up my waistline. I've chosen my hemline. I have seam allowance the rest. My name is on it or my logo is on it. It is sample number one, what page it is, what example it is. We are combining darts using the slash method. It's a skirt front, I'm cutting what unfold. That way, this pattern piece is now legally labeled appropriately. It is a working legal pattern piece that could be replicatable and it matches the aesthetic that's in my glossary. That means it's done.